We're going to begin the next interview with a spoiler alert. It begins with one man and a conversation about water, and it ends very differently indeed. It may, for example, involve a nine-year-old boy in a pet lamp in the studio with us. But let's begin at the beginning with 10 of New Zealand's 15 Olympic medals coming on the water, sailing, canoeing and rowing. The question is how and why? What is it about water and New Zealand competitors we so consistently do well at the Olympics and to help answer that we were joined by Rob Hamill record-breaking transatlantic rower Atlanta Olympian and world rowing champs uh, silver medalist well our, 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 we're, we're completely surrounded with it aren't we and it's a part of our livelihood we all grow up with it and it's our rivers it's our, our lakes and obviously the ocean surrounding us so I think there's a natural gravity that we we, you know, we can't help but be there, can't we, and getting amongst it all. And obviously there's a lot of support, great support going into those particular sports as well. Although you could argue the kayaking could do with a little more support from what I understand. I think yachting and certainly rowing gets a lot of support. Yeah. Mm. Also, you're going to be modest about this, but actually if you are a young New Zealander with ambitions to participate at the Olympics or compete and succeed on the international stage, mm. I guess there's rugby and there's netball. Yeah. And then if you're looking around, the people who have won and been world champs and set records and all of that kind of stuff are often on water. Yeah. Yes, it's right. It's Look, you, there must be, the World Cup rugby must have seen a huge uptake of rugby playing in our country and you're going to see the same thing now with rowing again and uh, obviously the kayaking and, the, and in particular the sailing god what a great outcome that was and i know as a kid watching our athletes performing at the highest level it did it became an aspirational thing for me the rowing thing was obviously a part of that and uh, watching Weibo Waldman from Fakatani Rowing Club that I was you know, part of later on. So you remember that, as if you you remember the, you having sure. heroes, oh, heroes oh, on the water. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Although one of my biggest heroes was Ali. Not yeah, that I was yeah. ever going <laughs> to jump in the boxing ring, but you do. It does create aspirational situations, I think, for young athletes. And sport is definitely an integral part of our society. And I think it saves a lot of our younger ch kids coming through that, you know, having that path, that outlet, that team camaraderie and all that sort of thing, I think is, uh, it's, it's huge. Can't undervalue it. Speaking of special young New Zealanders, we have one in the studio with us, don't we? we, we can, do. can you, so we've got your son Ivan here. Oh, hi Ivan, welcome. Uh, yeah, hi. Hi, how old are you Ivan? Nine. Well it's lovely to have you here. And you've come up talking for the day with your mum and dad, and your mum is sitting through there watching. Oops, now I just made my seat fall down. Your mum is sitting through there watching, and also you've brought a special friend, haven't you? Yep. Where's your mate? Can you? <laughs> this, so, <laughs> so for people listening on the radio, Ivan, who have you just introduced us to? Uh, my lamb, Mallow. So, so your lamb has come with you to Auckland for the day. Yep. Mallow is very, very cute. Very cute. <laughs> the force is strong in this one. <laughs> so, is was Mallow orphaned? How come you've got Mallow as a pet lamb? Well, uh, she was one of triplets, and her mother died, and so we got that from we got it from a farmer. But because she had so many more animals, she couldn't look after all of them. So she phoned us up and said, "Oh, do you want a lamb?" We we're like, "Yeah, sure." And, and I have to describe the scene for people listening. Rob, can you describe the scene for people listening as a proud dad? So we have a beautiful little lamby here. It's probably three weeks old, Ivan, uh, sitting in the studio with John. We were on the street today and met one of your fellow producers who dragged us in. So you've got to come in. OK, righto. So we were just up here for the day. So Mallow is sitting on Ivan's lap and it is a, it just makes me happy. And when Mallow and Ivan were walking through the newsroom... oh. What a babe magnet. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of works, hey, doesn't it? It's a message to us all. <laughs> it is a message. <laughs> That's right. He's take... a beautiful boy as he is, but, he does, <laughs> but it's even a, it's an advantageous little uh, side item to have with you. Uh, you kind of know this about sheep and lambs, so I've never really thought about it to this extent. Boy, they're domestic animals, aren't uh, they, uh, when they're domesticated? Yeah. I mean, oh, yes. Yeah. 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 She sleeps with our dog, our, our lab. At night outside, outside of course. Um, hence, she's got a little coat over her that our neighbours gave us, and it uh, keeps her warm at night because she doesn't have mum to cuddle up to. Although she does cuddle up to the dog, doesn't mm. doesn't she? I. Yep. What does the dog think of ha having a baby lamb, a, a pet lamb, cuddling up? Well, uh, she thinks that she's the parent, basically, and usually when we take her inside, Dal feels quite sad. It's and... Mello, Mello's almost falling asleep, Ivan, on your lap. Yes. That's just so sweet. Isn't that lovely? It's absolutely delightful.
And so, what, because you guys live in rural Waikato, sort of halfway yes. between Hamilton and Raglan, right? Yep. Beautiful home there. Yes, you visited the Australia. Australia. Oh, Long magic. Time ago. <laughs> so, what do you think Mello thinks of downtown Auckland? Um, Including being on the radio. Mm -hmm. Can the, can the viewers see the yeah, face? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Which way her face is going? Sorry, it's, oh. it's a classic. If you're listening to this on the radio, you, are, you, are, <laughs> you have to watch it online later <laughs> because Mallow is now eyeballing the camera with, with I think, the, the aplomb of a pro. I reckon the force is strong in that one, John. <laughs> <laughs> That was the most delightful visit earlier today, completely unexpected. Rob and Rachel and Ivan and Mallow and a little lamb, a three-week-old lamb walking through the newsroom uh, brings such a silly amount of joy that it was absolutely delightful. Thank you, Hamil Fano, for calling in. It was lovely to see you and Mallow.